<laughs> well, it sure is good seeing y'all. I always love this group, and um, it's so hot here. I'm anybody that's north of the Mason Dixon. I'm putting you in charge of cold weather. Just anything you can send to Texas, I, I'm in. I, I just like. I was outside a minute ago working with the. I keep some bees and and uh, messing with them in the hot sun, and I can't see, and it's just like. 102 outside right now here and um, it sure feels better in here. For those that I haven't met, my name is Myers Raymond. I'm a grateful recovered alcoholic from Central Texas in the middle of nowhere. Um, we're kind of 100 miles uh, uh, west of Austin and 60 miles north of San Antonio and literally uh, just a little bitty town out here. But after 45 years of living in Dallas, it's like a, a different world. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That's traffic. I, I don't, uh, it's, it's sort of crazy. Um, I hope Allie gets feeling better. He, I, I talked to him earlier and he sounded like crap and, uh, the, uh, I hope he's okay. Um, being a trained professional, I promise you, I won't talk one minute over and I, I'm more excited to hear what y'all got to say than what I got to say. Um, the, I, it's funny. I, the, the, the step 11 stuff, um, it, it's a, sort of a weird deal. I, I have spent so much time over the years working with people coming out of treatment, people <clears throat> that are new in the program, and it's been a blessing uh, for, for 35 years now. It, it's been a true blessing. I struggled getting connected with, with uh, God because I just trivialized that whole idea. Um, and then as I got closer and closer to God, it's like I seem to be the poster boy of making every mistake that you can make. Um, it, it's embarrassing to talk about sometimes the things that I thought and the things that I did, thinking the whole time that I was on point um, because I happened to be sober that day. Um, it was just kind of a crazy deal. The uh, Some of you guys may remember a cat named Mark Houston, and I, I was at a at a men's conference in uh, West Texas years ago, um, and we were sitting at a table with 280 men in this room eating breakfast, and I was trying to be funny, which is my worst downfall because I'm never funny, but but I, I was trying to be, and, and I remember saying something snarky about a bunch of guys that were uh, uh, on their knees in this dorm where we all slept. There's 16 of us in a dorm, and some of these guys slipped out of bed in the morning and were on their knees and they were saying uh, this, their morning stuff. And, and I'm just sitting there looking at them going, these guys are, they're, what are they doing? This is, this is so weird. Anyway, I made some comment and, and I looked up and nobody was smiling. And Chris, my twin brother was sitting right next to me and he got up and left and somebody across from me got up and left. And pretty soon everybody was gone except Mark Houston and Mark was sitting directly across from me and and he just looked at me and he said Myers can I can I ask you a quick question about about prayer and I said sure and he said do you ever pray and I said well of course I do Mark of, of course I do and he said what's that look like and I said well you we really want to know and he said yes that's why I asked you and I said okay and he said uh, I said well I, I do it when I'm backing out of the driveway in the morning and he said, really? And I said, yeah, that, that's that's kind of how I do it. I just, you know, say, God, thanks for the day and, and hope everything goes okay. And um, um, I hope I make a million bucks at work and you know, this kind of stuff. And he said, as you back out of the drive, and I, and I said, yeah. And he said, oh, I bet that's peaceful. And uh, and he said, I, he said, I'm, I'm concerned about you. Um, he said, I, 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 you're in a weird position here uh, because you're going to find out as you get farther into this deal. Um, that you can get really, really sick, and it has nothing to do with whether you're drinking or not. And I remember looking at him, and I kind of went, well, okay. But I felt so weird about the conversation, and I remember the next morning, it was a Sunday morning, and I remember getting up with all those guys, and I got up at 4.15 in the morning. I didn't want anybody to see me, actually. Uh, and I got out of that bed and got on the floor and kneeled down and said a prayer. Now, listen. Guys, I walked into the bathroom afterwards, got cleaned up, walked out, 
And I remember walking across this campus and Mark was sitting out there on a park bench with some guys that he worked with. And he looked up and he said, well, look at that. And I remember looking at him and he said, that guy just spent some time with God. And I looked at him and I went, how did you know? And he said, because you look different. You, you just look different. And I remember thinking about that later. And I went, you know, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it's something. Um, Guys, I was raised in a in an atmosphere AA wise where where the eleventh step was like a one and done deal. You did it in the process of doing the steps, and then afterwards it was an optional kind of thing. If you if you felt like you had to or needed to, now listen. Anybody that's been doing this for any length of time knows that that's crap. They know you know that that. But I, because of the nature of the way that I kind of came through all this, which was uh, you know. One step forward, two steps backwards. I, I never seemed to be able to connect on it um, until some old guys later on grabbed me and got me really uh, uh, on on the path. Um, but it was an amazing sort of a thing. Um, when you go back and you look at the at the uh, step eleven stuff on page eighty five, the, the, the there's a couple of points that I want to make, and I y'all go through this often enough. I'm not going to go break a bunch of this stuff down because I've got some other stuff I want to add to this thing. I want to talk to you on two different levels, if I can. Um, I, we talk on a personal basis. Um, Nathan and Joel and people that are on here like that, y'all all have your process that you go through on this stuff. But but I cannot hardly ever do any talk about the steps without looking at it from the perspective of what sponsorship looks like with that, too. So uh, you'll forgive me if sometimes I'll, I'll slide sideways a little bit and, and address it from that per perspective. Um, when, when you look at, at, at Bill's, the way he starts that chapter, that little piece of the stuff on 85, uh, where he starts talking about step 11, um, it's, it always catches me off guard every time I read it. And I've read it thousands of times, but every time I read it, I, I, it catches me off guard and I go, wait a minute, this is the same guy that on page 10 before Ebby gets into the picture like that, 10, he's talking about, I mean, he's the most contemptuous cat about anything spiritual. And now here he is a couple of years later, and, and he's writing this piece, which may be some of the clearest, cleanest, most direct direction on how to get connected to our creator. It's, it's some magic, magic stuff. I mean, if you can't see the hand of God, in that transformation, um, uh, look again uh, because it's it's just pretty uh, it's pretty special. The uh, let let's let's do this real quick because there's a couple of points that I want to make on this, and then and then I'll I'll uh, look in your book on page eighty five where it starts on the thing suggests prayer and meditation. Um, and then we shouldn't be shy on this matter of prayer. Better men than us are, are using it constantly. This was the stuff that I'm talking about here. When when they split it up into two parts, and everybody knows that there's a, a morning part when we're or an evening part when we retire at night. We, we we constructively review our day. They're asking these the same questions that we would ask an Emin for it. Were we resentful, uh, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Uh, these are the same things that we would see. But how many of y'all have been caught off guard by you'll go through your inventory, you'll see your own selfishness, you'll see your own fears and the rest of the stuff that go with this. You'll see your pride and the rest of that stuff. And then um, um, a year later, you're looking at yourself and you don't want to look at that stuff again, but you realize that it's manifested. All of this stuff has just flowed back into the picture again like this. And there needs to be uh, a way to do it. So you're you're left with with two options, really. You can either go do another inventory, pronto, or you could just practice these disciplines, this discipline of 11 and 12, practice that discipline, and, and then you're aware of it on a, on a daily uh, basis. Um, some of us are lucky enough to have loved ones that have been around us for a long time. And it's amazingly embarrassing when my wife would look at me and go, dude, you, you're, you sound horrible. What, what's going on? And I realize that it's just the manifestations of self 
coming back again into my life in the way I treat people and the way I treat my employees and the way I, uh, it's just, it's just crazy like that. So they give us these little directions like this. And then there's just this little list of questions that you can read sort of rhetorically and just ask the question yourself and, and see. Some of y'all have nightly inventories you do, rock on. Uh, I'm just, I, I struggle with the discipline of doing that. I have dozens of them in my files uh, that people have sent me and some of them are fascinating. If you can do that, it would be amazing. Um, I found years ago, um, uh, Cliff Bishop, my old sponsor, who was sponsored by Joe McQuaney, uh, uh, he, I asked uh, Clifford if he did his that way, if he had a, 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 an organized list of things that he did. And he said, no, he, he said, this is what I do. And he pulled out a little bitty notepad out of his pocket. And, and I said, what's that? And he said, it's just a, a little notepad. I buy them at Sam's Clubs for uh, uh, $10 for 20 of them, about $30. I mean, it's, it was nothing. I mean, it was next to nothing possible. And he said, I, I leave this on my nightstand. And so when I'm praying at the end of the night, when I'm sitting there like this, I just open my head to what what God's going to show me. Um, and if I had a conversation with Ryan earlier in the day and I was a little quick with him on the telephone, I'll write his name down like that. Uh, and 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 Laura, if I was supposed to call her back and I forgot to call her back. These are things that just rest in my head. And so I write them down in the morning when I get up. And I'm, and I'm going to do the on awakening piece of this thing halfway down that page. I'm going to tear that little sheet off, put it in my pocket and make sure that I deal with it pronto during the day. Um, and, and so it, it's still a discipline. It's not nearly as probably disciplined as some of y'all have on your nightly stuff like that. But the important part is that we're staying current and we're looking at, at this stuff. The, the thing that scares me, the thing that drives me nuts about the men that I sponsor are the men who have kicked the whole process to the curb and they only do it when the blowtorch gets back up against their rear end. Come on, y'all. Anybody can have faith. Anybody can have discipline when, when you're, you're in trouble, when she's getting ready to leave or when something's getting ready to happen at work or whatever. Get, tr get in trouble and things will, you'll be motivated to do this stuff. Notice how many times the word motive is used on that on that page on 86 like that. Y'all ever look up the word motive? It, it's funny. The one that I like that I thought it, it made me laugh. A reason for doing something, especially one that is hidden or not obvious. Now, listen, the, the, our motives are sketchy. And, and sometimes you can think my motive is I want to be a spiritual uh, giant. And, and I want everybody to see it and blah, blah, blah. It, my head takes me there all the time. Let me just address the guys in this room because it, it's kind of personal. How many of y'all have ever been out uh, with a girl and you thought your motives were you were going to be just this good stand up kind of guy? And then later, after the evening had passed, that you um, may, you felt uh, uh, slighted or maybe that you had wasted the evening and then you realized that your motive had nothing to do with kindness. It had nothing to do with trying to enrich somebody's life or be there for them. It had to do with what can I get this evening? What, what, what? It was about me. It was about this is the reason why Bill keeps bringing this selfish thing up um, the way it is. Let me ask you all as a side note, how many of you all believed or still believe that booze was the root of your problem? And then all you got to do is get rid of the booze and you're going to be groovy. Everything is going to be fine. Well, well, I mean, I did for dang near a decade. I mean, it was the craziest period of my whole life because I'm thinking, I don't understand why I'm, I'm sober one day at a time, but I'm so unhappy that I'm suicidal. You see how uncomfortable that is? And, and then Bill Wilson and his wisdom brings this little piece in it and we get lit, sort of bitch slapped by this idea that selfishness and self-centeredness, that we think is the root of our problem. Um, and and I, I tell you, some folks connect up the, 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 uh, uh, the logistics on that really easily. Some people keep fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. But the reality of it is the nightmare in your life, in most of our cases, is our own selfishness and self-centeredness and our need to have things our way. I talked to a, to a group of... Uh, of gals at a treatment center yesterday that I go see every week. 
and and I'm asking them some questions about about this stuff and and how many of them have been in treatment before and 80 percent of the room you know throws a hand up and and how how many of you uh, have you all thought about why you end up back in treatment again and again and again and and most of them had no clue and, and I keep saying could it be about your own expectations and your own selfishness and then we talked a little bit about that and pretty soon there are two or three little gals in there sobbing and some people over there you know just I mean it's a it's a, a game changer when you realize uh, that just being sober one day at a time is not the the, the, the the text never talked about that to any length. They talk about living life one day at a time. Uh, but we stay sober for good and for all. Um, so what does this have to do with 11? Everything. Because the, the, the need to be close to God is, is pretty special. But how many of y'all felt like I did? That if I got close to God once, I'd be close to God forever. It was like a, a little thing that, you know, you step across the threshold and all of a sudden you're standing in the room with, with your creator and everything is fine. Well, the problem with that stuff is, y'all, you know, is that there's a there's a, a thing called drifting involved here. And we tend to drift the other direction. And left unchecked, we will always move back 100% of the time. We will always move back to the original idea of, of, of selfishness and self-centeredness. Um, and, and that's where the, 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 the problem starts. Um, and so you have to stay consistent with it. I had breakfast one time with Joe McQuainy. We were talking about him just a minute ago, and Calvin and I were. And then the, the Joe, Joe was really direct. Joe sponsored my sponsor, and he would come from Arkansas to Texas pretty regularly. We, we used to have breakfast all, all the time together. We'd talk and visit and laugh. He always cracked me up, but he always scared the poot out of me. There, he, there was something about him when he leaned over you. I mean, he, would, he was a huge guy, and he would just kind of lean over you, and he would go, he'd go, Myers, and, and you better listen. And, and he said, you always make this complicated, and it's not. And I said, well, it seems pretty complicated to me. And he laughed, and he said, no, it's not. And he said, this is always about um, how much time are you spending with God, and how much time are you spending with God's kids. Those disciplines of 11 and 12. Now, at the time that he's saying this, I have no prayer life whatsoever to speak of, and I'm not sponsoring anybody. So you can imagine how weird this is. I'm trying to play Mr. AA, and the reality of it is I'm doing everything except the things that I'm supposed to be doing. So it gets a little, it gets a little weird. Um, I want to tell you a story real quick. A, a couple of them. I, I just, and then I'll get back to this, and we can talk about it. There, um, there was a kid in a in a, a meeting one night, a face to face meeting, and um, this little guy couldn't have been nineteen or twenty years old, real young guy. And uh, he said, "I had a conversation with my sponsor this morning, and he said something that kind of set me on. My, I just kind of it kind of caught me off guard, and I said." He said, let me tell you what he said. And he said, if if God was your girlfriend, would he be happy with how much time you're spending with her? And, and I, I, at first, when I heard it like this, I thought, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. And I, I remember folding my arms like this and leaning back and looking at this kid across the room. This was the same kid that always called God Big Homie. I spent time with Big Homie in the morning, and, and, and it always made me laugh. Like that when he when he did it like that. But listen to what he just said. If God was your girlfriend, would she be happy with how much time you're spending with her? And then all of a sudden it began to settle and I began to realize, Mars, you she'd be madder than hell, because I'm not spending any time. I'm not spending any time like that. I'm I'm going day to day to day, checking off AA stuff, reading aphorisms off the wall, um, and if and I'm golden. If I can get to six meetings a week, crazy like that. Um, uh, the the biggest single game changer in my life was when when they uh, tricked me into going to do some twelve step work, and I realized and became addicted to trying to help others because I realized how how important it was. But the idea um, of that all of these older guys, all of these people that had been in the rooms, when they kept trying to tell me to deepen that relationship with God. Um, um, that I that I that there's a benefit to it, 
Because y'all, listen, y'all understand this. If there's not a benefit to prayer and meditation, you won't do it. Uh, I mean, it, you won't do it. But there's a, there is a big payoff. Uh, it, it, it's huge. Let me shift gears real quick while we're right here, because I want to talk about this idea of sponsorship stuff. Let's say that I'm sponsoring Ryan for the for the first time. I'm not, but he looks way too healthy for me to be sponsoring. Him. That let's say that I'm sponsoring him. Um, I want to I want to once I meet him, I'm going to qualify him some. And the very first question I want to ask after we get talking a little bit is what his idea of God is. Uh, what's his relationship with God look like? I I don't like the idea of this arbitrary. Well, eventually he'll get it. Because I didn't. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm seven plus years in the rooms and, and I'm a suicidal mess. I did. I wasn't getting it. The only way I got it, somebody finally said, Myers, you're, you're off track. You're, you're, you're heading down the wrong path here. What you need to do is get back on the path and spend some time with your creator and then get off your skinny butt and go try to help somebody. And, and, and so left on my own devices, how many of y'all have the courage to go try to help somebody? I mean, some of you do. Some of you just came to the came to the stage with that, but some of you are like me. Uh, I, give me enough time up in my little head, and and I'm going to con- I'm 100 convinced that I'm not going to be um, I'm not going to be what I need to be. I'm not going to have the necessary skills. And the only thing that changed that was the courage that came from my relationship with God. And as that began to grow and form. Um, um, I began to realize, hey, I'll do what God says to. God's got this. Um, and the moment I made that connection, everything changed with my 12-step stuff. I've stopped being a coward about it and started realizing the importance of being of service uh, and maybe being involved in the lives of, of other people. Sometimes I think that we take this whole idea of our creator in a, in a, in a weird way. I'm, I'm not a light bulb guy or a doorknob guy, okay? So we won't go there. Um, um, I don't... I never met a doorknob I couldn't whip. So um, I, I just, I don't, it's, it, that's not greater than me. But um, I want to tell you this, this story about this kid that I met in treatment that was an absolute train wreck of a guy um, and a young, kid, young guy. Uh, but he was just a, a, a walking mess and he kept disrupting meetings and doing everything that he could to create havoc and chaos and and, and we, we had a conversation, and I asked him about his relationship with God. And, and he looked at me, and he said, he said, he said are you kidding me? Or what has God got to do with any of this? Now, I mean, obviously everything, but um, I'm just saying, hey, let's, let's see what we got here, okay? I said, how about, how about you pray about it tonight and see where, where you come up with? I'd been there four or five days teaching, and uh, uh, he, uh, he was, I was ready to kick him out of the deal completely and not let him back in the meeting because he was so disruptive. And so um, he came in the next morning and he walked in and he said, morning, Mr. Myers. He always called me Mr. Myers for some reason. He said, morning, Mr. Myers. And I said, what's up, buddy? And, and he said, oh, it's a pretty amazing morning. And I said, no kidding. And he sat in the back of the room and he didn't bug anybody. He didn't thump anybody's ears. He didn't jump up and down and say stupid stuff. He didn't do anything except just listen. And afterwards, he said, you got a couple of minutes? I said, yeah. And we walked outside, and he said, did you ever notice that plant right there? And I said, I think I have. And he said, how about that one right there? And I said, yeah, I think I have. And he said, Myers, I've been up since 5 o'clock in this, in this courtyard, and I'm seeing things I've never seen before. And I laughed, and I said, really? And I said, that must have been a great prayer last night. And he said, Myers, you have no idea. So... He becomes a stellar student and helps a lot of other people for a couple of weeks, and then he's gone and heads back to where he lives. And um, um, the day that he left, I said, dude, tell me about your relationship with God before you leave. And he said, it's a little embarrassing. And I said, just tell me what it is, buddy. And he said, I think God, I think God is Thor. And I said, you're sore? And he said, no, Thor. And I mean, like I said, you said, I said, like Thor with the big hammer. And he said, yeah, like, like that. And I said, okay. And he said, does it have to change? And I said, I'm I'm not here. Bill says we can, we can, we got to start someplace and you can start your conception someplace. So so you you need to, that's up to you, buddy. 
and and he said okay and so he rocked and rolled out of there and got uh, involved in a home group and then later got involved in the treatment industry and i met him a couple of times like i saw him at a meeting one night like this and i said dude how's it going and he said i, I uh, good good and i said how's thor and he said thor is amazing and i said no kidding and he said hey look at this and he took his shirt off and he had this tattoo done on, on his body of, of thor on his back with his arm around his neck with this big hammer across his chest and i thought wow well okay if, if you say so it, it was just sort of an amazing deal i saw him six months later and he walked past me and we we, we high-fived and i said how's thor and he said well you know and I said, no, dude, you can't back away. And he said, no, I didn't back away. I just am looking at God a little differently now than I did before. I don't think God looks like Thor. And I went, no kidding, no kidding. Mark Houston used to always say, and it used to always make me smile, um, if, if you are today where you were a year ago, you need to do some change. You need to change up your game plan a little bit like this. Because the spiritual growth that this 11th step stuff uh, brings into the picture, guys. This is this is game changing stuff, um, and and I'm, I got to tell you, it doesn't seem to make a lot of a, uh, of sense intellectually. I always struggle with the connection like that. Um, but if I just get the intellectual intellectual part and set it aside, and and just sort of fall into God's arms, then then it's a it's a whole different thing, a completely different um, way of, of looking at that stuff. The uh, Let's talk for a few minutes. We've got about uh, 14 minutes. Let, let, let me talk. Uh, if you're either going to find yourself on the path growing spiritually, and it's my prayer that all of us get there. Some of you are, are struggling. I've never met a group of folks that don't struggle from time to time. Uh, some struggle mightily with the whole idea, and it's the first thing that, that, that kind of, Somebody sent me an article one time from an Akron, Akron newsletter, and at the bottom of it, it said, alcoholics, the only people on God's green earth that takes what works and then stops doing it. And we, we see that all the time. People who, who are, are bulletproof for, for months and months and months, they've done everything, They're, they have some discipline, and then life gets large again. She comes back in the picture, get a fine car, job raise, it doesn't matter. I get distracted, and pretty soon I find myself praying less and less and less because God's good and everything is groovy right here. And, and it's just a weird deal. As we drift, we feel it because, it, it, and sometimes it'll manifest in weird-ass ways. You will come out sideways saying things to people that you never intended to say unkind things to. I mean, it's just, it's a perfect indicator. Um, again, let somebody that really loves you walk up and say, dude, you're acting like a jerk these days. And that's all you need to know about where you are. I mean, it, this is this is perfect evidence that you've moved sideways in your spiritual quest. And, and so um, let me make a couple of suggestions, buddy, because sometimes it's really, really hard. Uh, I get hundreds of emails over the years uh, from people who are, who are asking questions about how do you get back on track? What do you do? There's a million things out there that you can read um uh with youtube stuff and whatnot there's there's tons of stuff that you can listen to i want to give you uh, uh, uh just a little list of some stuff that i found amazingly helpful and um the, if you miss it on this uh audio um you can email me i put it in the chat you can email me and i'll be delighted to send you what i have or, or give you the, the names again of what we're doing like that um uh, one book that, that I found that was fascinating was a little bitty thin book. It's, it's, it's not big at all by a cat named Joseph Grizone, G-I-R-Z-O-N-E. Um, and it's just, the little book is called Never Alone. And it's just about, it's written so simple. And yet I found myself when I read it a couple of years ago, I found myself feeling super energized about my relationship with God. And I'd made, uh, um, all kinds of notations in it and whatnot. And I've read it three or four times since then, and it always makes me feel um, this 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 kind of coolness around my my relationship. Another one along those same lines um, 
the uh, I was raised a Protestant, so don't know much about Catholicism, uh, but the uh, this guy named Brennan Manning, y'all. Look, if y'all have never read any Brennan Manning stuff, go go grab him. I think he probably read wrote ten or twelve books over the years. He was a a, a, a Trappist monk um, who was brilliant, wrote some amazing stuff, but he was also a brutal alcoholic. He died ten or eleven years ago, um, and but he was. Had he been this polished priest standing up there writing these books and talking about this stuff, I would have gone, yep, 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 thanks, thank you, um, and moved on. It, it would not have meant anything. Um, but because he was a busted up drunk, just like me, uh, I, I was drawn to the things that he said, and he spoke volumes about big ticket items that I had never considered, like God's grace. I was raised in a church situation where I can remember a pastor my pastor saying, uh, if you're a good boy, God's going to love you. And so I spent all my time in that nest thinking, okay, I've got to be good in order for God. And so if I'm bad, then it's obvious that God hates my little skinny butt. And it wasn't like that, like that. When you read, when you read uh, Brennan Manning, uh, the first book that he wrote was uh, Ragamuffin Gospel in the 80s. Um, if you read it before, go back and read it again. I found an old copy that I had of that book and read it about uh, a year and a half ago, and it, and it blew me away. I, I bet I had 30 notations in that book in the first 15 or 20 pages, just stuff that just stood out like, like crazy stuff. I mean, it was just amazing. But I learned more about God's grace uh, than from that than anything else that I'd ever studied. Um, I've got probably 140 theology books on my iPad. Uh, uh, I read a lot. Um, the, uh, but nothing affected me in any of the stuff that I read. Nothing affected me like Brennan Manning did because he was a busted up dumpster, dumpster fire, just like me. And the things that came out of his mouth were absolutely magic. Um, there's another one along that line by a guy named, uh, uh Jonathan Morris. He was a, uh, another Catholic guy. I don't know. It was just kind of a weird deal. He wrote a book called the way of serenity. How many of y'all have listened to the serenity prayer? I mean, we, we probably said the serenity prayer 10,000 times, each one of us. I mean, it just, we say it, but we don't listen to it really. And this, this little guy wrote this book about the serenity prayer, but he, he writes it in such a way that you'll see things about the serenity prayer that you've never seen before. And you will never, ever, ever look at it the same again um, because of the way that he wrote it. It's pretty cool. Um, Sometimes when we get bored with prayer, sometimes we get bored with this stuff. Uh, sometimes it's just um, somebody introduced me 15 years ago to contemplative prayer um, and uh, go look it up. There's a bunch of stuff online, a bunch of YouTube stuff. But contemplative prayer is really fun because you're, you're, you're thinking about something, a different word when you're doing it. Uh, but it, it's sort of magic. Um, the... Uh, there's also uh, one, uh, a good buddy of mine, some of y'all know him, Yale Sage, uh, wrote a list. I don't have his, his contact stuff on there, but he wrote a list of, of, he calls it a meditation collection. It's like 41 pages of documents of, of spiritual stuff that floats all over the spectrum. And some of it is, I was talking to him the other day and I said, Yale, I don't know where the heck you got all this stuff, but it's, it's like... <clears throat> I mean, I've been reading this stuff for 35 years, uh, or at least the 30, um, and I, I got to tell you that there were things that he put on that file um, that, and I'll, anyway, I'll be glad to send it to you. Um, I know a, a dozens and dozens of men right now that are reading um, one or two of those little exercises every day, and it's making a huge difference in how they, 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 they look at their relationship with, uh, with God. Um, one of the other side things, too, that's fun, um, some of you that were raised in church and then walked away from church, sometimes it's really fun to go back and, and see what that looks like sober uh, with no judgment. Um, uh, I said I would never, ever be in church again and then found myself back having the time of my life. I got introduced to a bunch of Bible study guys, got studying stuff that I had not studied in a long time. I, it's just something to suggest out there. Sometimes we we make these decisions that we're going to walk away from things. And, and sometimes we need to re, 
re-look at them, re- at least reevaluate what we what we did and, and what we said. Um, let me let me let me make a, a, a couple of suggestions real quick. The, the, we didn't even talk about meditation stuff because it, it's a. Um, uh, let me tell you the worst. The worst person in the situation of meditation is you. You'll always be so critical of yourself. Um, if you can start over with that and be real gentle with yourself, um, um, Barefoot Bill up in New York told me one time, "There's no such thing as a bad meditation." And I said, "That's BS, dude. I I, I can name you hundreds of them that were bad." And he said, "They're bad because you made them bad." Because of the way you looked at it, you set a standard and you want that standard to be here. So if you're not floating off the ground in your meditation, then it's a bad meditation. He said, Meyer, stop. You're, you're, you're the fly in your own ointment. Quit. Um, and, and I kind of went, OK, I, I get it like that. Um, but if you've never done that, for some of us, it's a weird thing to kind of kick open and start doing. It feels a little weird like that. But I'm telling you guys, it's been one of the most mind changing uh uh, uh, deals that I've ever done. Um, and, and in times of my life when there was lots of turmoil, there was lots of things going on, to be able to sit still with my Creator and to just be still in the presence of God um, has been absolute uh, absolute magic uh, on that thing. I want to tell you one more real quick story and then we'll get out of here. Um, there was a guy that showed up at treat one time that uh, I happened to be there. Coincidentally, I just happened to be there when he got there. And, and somebody said, Myers, will you help him unload his suitcase so that we can uh, uh, catalog it? And I said, yeah. And I picked up this book that was laying on top. And I guys, literally, I, I dropped the book back in his suitcase. And I looked at him and I said, dude, what is that? And he said, it's a satanic Bible. Do you have a problem with that? And I said, no, sir. No, sir. This, this, it, it's groovy. And uh, so when he looked the other way, I took a pair of his pants and picked it up with his pants and set it over and set it up out of the suitcase. I didn't want to touch it. It freaked me out like that. And so the, 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 he, uh, he was a pain in the butt. He was. And uh, two weeks in, he split AMA. He just left. Um, and, and I didn't see him for about a month. And uh, I got back down there. I was only down there for 10 days at a time. And, and I, when I got back down there on the next trip, he was standing in the courtyard. And I looked at him and I kind of went, oh, shoot, I, I'm not ready for this. And so uh, he walked over toward me and he said, I'd like to apologize for my behavior uh, when I was here before. They let me come back. And I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm looking at things a little different. And I said, OK, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Let me know if I can help with anything. And so every question he asked in treatment, there was no questions that he asked about recovery, about the, the big book, about it. every question he asked was about uh, a spiritual questions about God and, and things like that. And so we, we, we got on through it. He, he was a stellar guy. If somebody walked in the front door of that treatment center like this, I don't care what was going on, if he was in the middle of a class or if he was in the middle of eating lunch, he would run out grab the guy, walk him in, be, I mean, it was, it was magic to watch this guy and how he treated other people like that. Um, he got out. I kept up with him for a, a, a year or so. Um, the, uh, he came up about, um, he turned up about uh, uh, maybe a, two years later and he sent me an email. And it was an email. He said, he said, what do you think, dude? And I said, I texted him back and I said, what am I looking at? It sounds, it looks like you're sitting in front of a swimming pool or something, but I can't see your face. And he said, oh no. He said, I'm at church. I'm getting ready to get baptized. And I went, no way. And he said, he said, yeah, yeah, I, I just did. And, and it, I just, listen, I'm not suggesting that we all have to be baptized. What I am suggesting though, is, is that the, the magic happened when you can take a little satanic guy that's so full of evil um, that he's a, he's a destructive mess. And, and because of the disciplines that he practiced in this program, daily moving towards his creator and growing and moving and growing like this, you know, he later became a completely different guy, which is just flat magic. This is all about God, God's kids, 
and what we're doing with those. Um, uh, if you're struggling, let's go get busy trying to get back in in the frame. If you if there's anything I can do for my end, y'all, I'll be delighted to uh, to help uh, for sure. Um, it'll change your personal relationship with your family and friends and the people that you know, and it'll change the relationship between you and the people that you sponsor because you have something more to offer than just being sober one day at a time. You'll have something that is life changing to move them towards, which is some magic, magic stuff. Um, so grateful for that and grateful for you rascals. It's so good. Remember, send the cold weather to Texas pronto. Thank you. all